Meta is constructing a new supercomputer in order to train massive machine learning algorithms. Despite being just half completed, the artificial intelligence research supercluster already ranks among the world's most powerful machines. When completed, the corporation formerly known as Facebook claims it will be the fastest AI supercomputer on the planet. Meta thinks that by training computers to detect hazardous material, RSC will be able to enhance their goods but analysts and whistleblowers are uncovering Facebook's true intentions behind reaching AI supremacy ahead of its competitors. Further advancements, according to the business, might enable real-time language translation between tens of thousands of people online, as well as multitasking algorithms that can learn from and generalize across diverse inputs, such as text, photos, and video. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I'll show you the terrifying prospect of Facebook owning a supercomputer which is ahead of everyone else's in terms of performance and capabilities. All of this, according to the business, will assist progress real-world applications such as robots and, of course, provide the groundwork for the, as yet primeval, metaverse. In the metaverse, it's always a 3D multi-sensorial experience, and you have to construct artificial intelligence agents in that environment that are meaningful to you, Meta's VP of Artificial Intelligence told the Wall Street Journal this week. Whatever the final uses, the investment demonstrates that the industry's major players, from Meta to Alphabet and Microsoft, see cutting-edge AI as more important. The announcement is part of a trend toward ever-larger machine learning algorithms that need more processing power and larger datasets. In 2020, OpenAI's natural language algorithm GPT-3 demonstrated that by increasing the number of internal connections and algorithms, known as parameters, and the quantity of training data pumped through them, significant increases might be obtained. GPT-3 was 17 times larger than its predecessor, GPT-2, with 175 billion parameters. Encouraged by the success of GPT-3, Microsoft introduced Megatron AI last year, a three times larger algorithm than GPT-3, while Google and Chinese researchers have developed algorithms with over a trillion parameters. In preparation for the next stage, Meta stated that they want to employ RSC to train algorithms with billions of parameters. These enormous algorithms are increasingly necessitating the employment of supercomputers, the room-sized machines that scientists use to model physical systems ranging from fundamental particles to Earth's climate to the whole cosmos. For example, OpenAI stated last year that its partner Microsoft had constructed a dedicated supercomputer to train its models. The new system, according to the businesses, was among the top five fastest supercomputers in the world at the time. Though Meta does not provide figures on RSC's current peak speed, it looks to be equivalent in terms of raw processing power to the Perlmutter supercomputer, which is ranked sixth fastest in the world. RSC is now running on 6,800 NVIDIA A100 graphics processing units, a specialized processor that was originally dedicated to gaming but is now utilized more extensively, particularly in AI. Already, the machine is 20 times better at processing computer vision operations and 3 times faster at processing complex language models, such as GPT-3. The faster a corporation can train models, the more it can finish and enhance in a given year. RSC will provide Meta the opportunity to train algorithms on its vast treasure of user data, in addition to pure speed. The business previously trained AI on public, open-source datasets, but RSC will utilize real-world, user-generated data from Meta's production servers, according to a blog post. Given the various privacy and security concerns that Meta has encountered in recent years, this fact may make some people cringe. The business made efforts in the statement to emphasize that the data will be carefully anonymized and secured end-to-end. -end. They also stated that RSC will not have a direct link to the greater internet. Later this year, the installation will be expanded to incorporate 16,000 GPUs and an exabyte of storage, equivalent to 36,000 years of high-quality video, to accommodate Meta's massive training data sets and substantially boost training performance. Meta claims that once completed, RSC will supply training data at a rate of 16 gigabytes per second and operate at a peak speed of 5 exaflops. If built today, RSC would be the world's fastest AI supercomputer. But it's worth delving into what it entails for a second. The construction of supercomputers varies greatly. 
both central processing units, CPUs, and graphics processing units, GPUs, are often used in combinations, although the chip manufacturers varies, as does the infrastructure that connects them together. To compare supercomputers, the industry use a metric known as floating point operations per second, or, more informally, FLOPs, which estimates the number of simple equations solved by a supercomputer each second. Fugaku, the world's fastest all-around supercomputer, is Japanese, according to the most recent top 500 ranking. Fugaku, which does not use GPUs, had a scorching top performance of 442 petaflops, or 442,000 trillion operations per second. That's quick. However, technologies such as Fugaku are increasingly being designed to train AI. As a result, Top 500 began providing a new benchmark for AI apps in particular. Because machine learning algorithms do not need the same level of precision as scientific applications, the new AI benchmark use a less precise metric. According to that metric, Fugaku reaches peak speeds of more than an exaflop, or a million trillion operations per second. This is what an AI supercomputer entails. The majority of the computers on the top 500 list are run by governments and institutions. Private supercomputers, such as RSC and the machine constructed by OpenAI and Microsoft, are not included. In terms of performance, we must take the firms at their word. If RSC achieves peak speeds of 5 exaflops for AI applications, it will outperform Fugaku by a significant margin. But it's unclear if it will still be the finest in the world by the end of the year. For high-precision applications, the next Frontier supercomputer is predicted to be three times quicker than Fugaku. Frontier, which is also designed for AI, will be a tough competitor for the top AI supercomputer. It's also worth mentioning that peak performance on a test may not always correspond to actual performance on real-world tasks. The actual test of a strong system design is one that can run quickly on the duties they are supposed to execute, says high-performance computing expert Bob Sorensen. When running real-world applications, it is not unusual for certain HPCs to reach less than 25% of their so-called peak performance. A new AI benchmark known as MLPerf is getting closer to gauging performance on real-world activities. It doesn't yet measure how quickly systems train really big models, but it's a good starting point. The most current MLPerf findings showed that systems based on NVIDIA A100 processors, the same as those used to create RSC, dominated the field. The largest system tested, NVIDIA's own Selene AI supercomputer, taught the, now minimal, BERT language processor in 16 seconds, compared to 20 minutes for lesser systems. RSC will be, and already is, a formidable machine for AI research in any case. To date, it appears that increasing the size of algorithms yields benefits. However, not all academics believe that these advantages will last indefinitely or that they will always be worth the ever-increasing energy and financial resources required to train algorithms. Large language models, in particular, are prone to picking up a variety of undesirable habits and biases during training. There is additional effort being done to improve the efficiency and accountability of algorithms. DeepMind an AI research group, produced a 280 billion parameter big language model dubbed Gopher last year, which might surpass previous large language models. However, they also created a much smaller 7 billion parameter model known as Retro. Given the opportunity to reference an external library of instances to influence its predictions, a type of memory, Retro outperformed algorithms 25 times its size by matching or outperforming them. DeepMind claims that the algorithm's thinking is also easier to track, making it more transparent and perhaps easier to eliminate bias. However, no matter how clever and autonomous AI agents develop in certain ways, they will most likely remain unconscious robots or special-purpose gadgets that assist humans in specialized, complicated jobs for the foreseeable future. As digital devices, they have a fundamentally different operating system, digital versus biological, and, as a result, cognitive capabilities and capacities than biological entities such as humans and other animals. In general, digital reasoning and problem-solving agents pale in comparison to their biological counterparts. Keeping this in mind, it is becoming increasingly vital for human professionals working with advanced AI systems, for example, in military or policymaking teams, to create a suitable conceptual model of AI systems' cognitive skills in respect to human cognition.
This issue will become increasingly important as AI systems improve and are deployed with greater autonomy. As a result, the purpose of this study is to give more clarity and understanding into the essential qualities, distinctions, and peculiarities of human, biological and artificial, digital intelligences. The third portion introduces a worldwide framework for developing instructional content on intelligence awareness. This may be used to create education and training programs for humans who will be required to utilize or collaborate with powerful AI systems in the near and far future. So, while creating massive algorithms on supercomputers is impressive, Retro demonstrates that innovation in how those models are produced is also vital. Both sides of the spectrum will very certainly continue to be researched, with the expectation that one will feed into and improve the other. So, what is your opinion on Meta's new research project? Do you think that brute forcing actually intelligent artificial intelligence models is the way to go or are they just wasting their money? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.